Part two. Okay, guys, sorry for any wind noise. I don't have any wind protection on my microphone, which is just on my phone. Anyways, the tools we're going to be using to do the actual, like, main carving part for the hook. First one I use is this chainsaw. It's like a circular chainsaw blade. It's pretty dangerous, but it works really well and it gets a lot of material off quickly. I picked this up at Harbor Freight for about $30. And also everything that I show you, all the tools, everything, the paint and things like that, I'll link to everything in the description. Yeah, so to start off with this one, this is what I use to do the bulk of the carving. Then I usually go back with, uh, this is a ceramic flap disc for a four and a half inch angle grinder. Uh, it's really good at smoothing out a lot of the marks that this that this one leaves. Whoops. Oh yeah, this one comes apart too, by the way. You can do a lot of shaping with it too. Okay, first step of the carving process with the angle grinder is to basically bring everything down to the profile line or the black line of your design. So all of this wood, all of the this wood, just going down and trying to make it level and even all the way across. Once you have all that done, all the way around, then you can start adding your contours and varying the thickness this way. Okay, now on to the fun part. Gonna start shaping it. What I'm gonna do is basically just come at this at a 45 degree angle, just take that corner off. And you can see I already did a little bit here. Just carve all the corners off and round it nice and smooth. See how it's pretty much the same thickness all the way down? I'm going to take this, narrow it, and then slowly widen out as it gets to the fat part. And you can see I actually started already doing that here. But as I make it thinner this way, I will simultaneously be rounding edges. This is where it turns into more wood sculpting. Shut up and sit down. All right, once you're satisfied with the shape of it and the thickness all the way around, then I usually move on to either hand sanding or I have this Ryobi corner cat with a pretty aggressive bit or grit, a pretty aggressive grit sandpaper pad. I think this is an 80. And then I will just go over the whole piece, smoothing it all out completely, progressing to finer grits. And you can see how, how narrow I got it there tapers up to the pointy part, tapers down, just rounded all the things off that I wanted. And just a quick tip, taking old belt sander belts and tearing them up into strips makes it really handy to sand areas that you can't get to with the sander and also like really tight spots like that, you can take part of a belt sander, roll it up tight, and get it, or just bend it like this, and get it into those tight, hard to get areas to get all the sanding done. Okay, that stuff that you guys all thought looked like peanut butter that I was spreading on it is actually a Bondo wood filler. This, I'm actually just gonna be using a different type, it's the all-purpose putty. 
I actually think it works a little better. Uh, but it's a two-part. It has a hardener and the, uh, the actual putty. And you just mix them in the ratio that they tell you to mix them. And then we're going to take one of these spreaders and just spread it into all of these cracks. That's what I was doing, was filling these gaps that are left over from the rounded edges. Since they're 2 by 4s they have kind of a rounded edge that don't meet. And uh, to fill those, that's why I did that. No peanut butter. All right, now that the epoxy is cured, it is time for more sanding. Ugh. Okay, all of that is sanded, and this next step is optional. It's what I did on the original hook. I marked these lines because this is where the rope handle part will start, and it's gonna angle that way, the rope is, and then angle this way, overlapping. And if you just leave it the way it is, the rope is going to be bumped up quite a bit. So what I do is carve away down about, I don't know, maybe mm, quarter of an inch or so. That way the rope will sit more flush, maybe not perfectly flush, but it will be more on this level than being bumped up so big. So let's do that. I'll do that for both sides. It's a little too windy to be doing this, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a coat of primer on it. Okay, I got all the designs drawn. The way I did the original was I printed out a fairly good resolution image of the hook, and I'll provide a link to the image I used down in the description, and freehand drew it on to the hook, just like this. This one, I just kind of looked at a few pictures online and just got creative. Okay, it took me a little while to figure out actually what this is called. But this is the bit that I use to do the carving. It's called a structured tooth tungsten carbide cutter. And I will also put a link to it. It does a good job at carving because it's very aggressive. It's got all those little spiky points coming off of it. And one thing when you're carving is when you're carving to lay it down at a pretty severe angle. If you do it like this, it's going to hit every grain, every bit of gr you know grain in the wood, and it'll make a bumpy or jagged line. Let's get to carving. It is carved and primed, and now it is time to put a coat of paint on. I'm going to use this, and it should look all nice and shiny. Shiny!